There's a scene in the movie Calvary that absolutely haunts me. If you haven't seen it yet, this is your official spoiler alert because the scene I'm thinking about is the final scene. A priest finds himself on the beach with a crazed man pointing a gun at him. All week, this man has been terrorizing the priest. He threatened to kill him, burnt down the church, even killed his dog. As it turns out, the man was abused by a priest when he was a child, and in a final attempt at justice, he has decided to attack the church, particularly this priest, precisely because the priest is innocent. He wants an innocent man to suffer just as he has suffered. Just before he pulls the trigger, he asks the priest about his dog. Did it upset you, the dog? Yes, it did, he says. Did you cry? Yes, I did. That's nice. And when you read what your fellow priest did to all those poor children, all those years, did you cry then? No. I suppose I felt detached from it, the way that you are when you read anything in the newspaper or see it on the television. Bang! The man shoots the priest. What I find so haunting about this scene is not how the priest was killed in cold blood, not the despair of his abused killer, but the chilling truth of the priest's words. Here, a good man, truly a good and innocent priest who cared about people and wanted to bring healing, realized that he had shed more tears for his dog than he had for thousands of people sexually abused by priests. He had spent more time mourning, truly devastated, thinking about the loss of a dog than he did about the immense human suffering all around him, the decades of turmoil that people like his killer had gone through, their lives taken away from them at the hands of his fellow priests. What's haunting about it is not that it's a bad priest or it's an offensive response or even that it's particularly uncommon. What's haunting about it is that it represents how so many of us feel. It's an indictment of you and me. How easy it is for us to gloss over immense human suffering, to become desensitized by it, to let it slip into the abstract far from our emotions, while at the same time becoming enraged by things that just don't matter that much, overwhelmed with grief for lesser, frankly, embarrassing things. This scene captures how so many of us have dealt with the sex abuse crisis, but I think it's also a scene that speaks to how we've dealt with so many of our world issues. It reminds me of how upset people get about the destruction of holy places in Israel, and yet care very little about the suffering of human lives, of the living stones in that same city. It makes me think how much money was pledged to rebuild Notre Dame in Paris after the fire, more than $800 million in just 10 days. And yet, as a city, Paris has nearly 30,000 homeless people, and 40% of its residents live below the poverty line. I think about this scene when I see people enraged by the destruction of property due to protests and riots, particularly church property, and yet don't raise a peep at the evil things that caused the protests in the first place. Racism, poverty, immense human suffering. Like the abused man in the movie, what people are doing to church property is illogical. It's awful, just disgusting. There is no justifiable reason to tear down religious artifacts or to graffiti someone's property, just as there is no justifiable reason to kill someone's dog, no matter what may or may not have happened. It is a sick mentality, one that has no place in society. The idea of the anonymous vigilante exacting justice, inflicting chaos out of a sense of revenge or anarchy, it's absolutely disgusting. And those who seek solutions through vandalism and destruction should be ashamed of themselves and brought to justice. But so too should the man who cries for his dog and not for human suffering at the hands of his friends. So too should the people who are publicly outraged by the loss of property, but don't speak a word against the racism, poverty, and immense human suffering that caused the anger in the first place. A world that cares more about property, statues, old buildings, or even its own comfort than it does about human lives is not a Christian world is a world that knows nothing of the gospel, nothing of the love of God, nothing of the kingdom of God that Jesus came to announce. And look, I know it's hard. I know I'm guilty of the same things. A hundred people die in a bombing in Syria. 15,000 children die every single day from preventable causes. 35 million Americans struggle with food insecurity. On one level, these are just numbers. They're abstract and distant, and so they're easy to ignore. A statue of the Blessed Mother gets smashed, a church gets graffitied, 
there's something about that that's easier to grasp, easier to rally around, easier to get angry about. But just think about that, really. It's awful that these things happen. We have a right not to be vandalized and perpetrators should be prosecuted for their actions. But at the end of the day, it's just a thing. It may be expensive or even priceless. It could be an image of Mary or a saint or even Jesus, but it's still just a thing. As Catholics, as Christians, we do not worship things. We do not become attached to things. We do not become enraged or violent or go to war over things. A statue of Jesus or Mary isn't actually Jesus or Mary. It isn't holy in itself, but people are. What does Jesus say in Matthew 25? When you cared for the least of these, you did so to me. What do we believe about the human person from the point of conception? That they are afforded inalienable rights, that they have a special dignity that can never be taken away. There is a holiness to every human being, no matter what, because the Father has fashioned them, the Son identifies with them, and the Holy Spirit animates everything they do. And so, I guess my question is this. Do we even care? Do we weep when people suffer? Do we get angry when people are abused? Do we rise to action and put our money where our mouth is when the human family is torn apart? Or, as it would seem all too often, do we only care about buildings and artifacts, and holy places. We can care about both, and to some extent, we should. As people who recognize that all is gift, we know that we have been entrusted with God's bountiful creation and made stewards of it all. Letting ourselves be trampled on, our property destroyed, our tradition wiped away, this is not good for us, and it's not liberating to allow people who do evil to go uncorrected. But our correction will only make sense if it is rightly ordered. It will only bear any weight if its foundation is the gospel, a gospel that cares more about people than it does things. It doesn't matter if we're talking about the sex abuse crisis, the occupation of the Holy Land, the burning of Notre Dame, or the vandalism of churches. We must never forget that people matter more than things. Our goal in this life is not to save things, it is to save people. And if that means giving up some of our things, diverting some of our resources away from priceless artifacts for the sake of human life, then so be it. Holy things may lead us to God, and that's great. But people, living, breathing works of creation, we are where God resides, his living temple. If we spend all of our time building and protecting stones made of human hands, we may find ourselves left with nothing more than cold, empty cathedrals while the living stones are left outside, broken and hungry, as Jesus says to us what no one ever wants to hear. What you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. Depart from me, you accursed into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels.